I'm excited to talk some NBA with our guest today. He played in the league for 17 years. He's an NBA champion, but currently he's an analyst for ESPN's NBA Today, as well as the host of the Road Tripping Podcast and a new YouTube channel. You're doing a lot, Richard. Yes, the Sports yes. Gap. The guy is a content maniac, Richard Jefferson. Welcome to Take Line, my friend. Oh, thank you for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Let's go. All right. Well, then let's just get it started. Then let's start. We are a sports show. And every now and again, we have some breaking news during the show. And according to The Athletic, the Knicks, Lakers, and some other teams are talking right now. And based on everything that's happened in Philly this year, what are your thoughts on where Ben Simmons could possibly end up? Yes, we started with that. <laughs> you know, I like, look, I saw some rumors with like Brandon Ingram. Um, I think that would actually be a positive thing. And they're like, oh, fit. Like, people, you want to know the best fit is motherfuckers that's on the court. That's the best <laughs> fit. That's the best fit, right? Like, right, that's what I'm saying. Oh, oh well, it, will, will the fit work out? It's like, well, what's our other option, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, dude, look, sometimes, like, you've had to, like, you know, you know, you've had to cut things with a fork before, right? Like, you just got to, you know, you got to get through with things, man. I've eaten ice cream with a fork. Why? Because there was no spoons around. So what am I supposed to do? We've all been in college. You got to make best of what you have at, at your disposal. So when I look at some of these things, I think there's going to be a lot of trades or a lot of like kind oh, yeah. of movement. When you look at some of the teams that like New Orleans, you know, they've obviously regressed. A lot of it has to do with with um, Zion. But yeah. I think Brandon, I think Brandon Ingram and they're like, well, how will he fit with Tobias? And it's like, well, how how is how is Ben Simmons fitting with Tobias <laughs> <laughs> right now? It's like, guys. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it's I think there's going to be some movement. Um, I think they're the top teams are in a tough spot. The teams that, you know, people projected, I think you look at Lakers, Philly and and um, and the Brooklyn Nets. I think those three teams are like, we kind of have it, but something's missing. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see some major moves. Have you ever, you know, obviously like the, the player empowerment era has been a topic of conversation with players just having more agency in their careers and ability to speak about things uh, that concern them with regards to their relationship with their teams and with the various deals that they are mentioned in. But have you ever really, have we ever seen anything like the Ben Simmons uh, incident, like this this situation with Ben Simmons, has, has it ever really happened in this kind of way before? Uh, I think to certain degrees. I think every situation, you can't ever say one situation is the exact same as another. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've seen 20 different situations where guys weren't happy. I've seen Steve Francis cry on draft night because he didn't want to go to the Grizzlies. <laughs> and ended up going someplace else. Ended up going to Houston. No, but I'm saying that yeah. who gets draft, who gets yeah. drafted second or third or fourth, and is like sitting there, like he told him not to draft them. I don't want to go there. We saw it with we saw it with Eli uh, with Eli Manning. You yeah. know, getting drafted by San Diego. I was like, I'm not going there. So it's like whether you start and these are guys that are unproven. They've never even proven anything. Yeah, saying I'm crazy. not going to show up there. So, you know, I think that shows a greater sense of entitlement than a guy that plays someplace for six or seven years. And it's just like, yeah, this is not a good fit. I'm ready to move on. And truth be told, as much as Ben, I think, has been problematic in this situation, I think the blame is a 50-50 pie. Yeah, no one has handled this well. Everybody's no, handled no. this as as poorly as you could do it, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, so I, so I, the, the point to, your, to answer your question, I don't think, I think this is less about player empowerment and more just about a moment in time with a certain player in a certain franchise. So you're talking about franchises. And when you talk about like historical franchises, the Lakers always come up and despite how they've looked and there's, there's a lot of chatter about the Lakers shouldn't necessarily be on TV as much as they are. Cause they're not winning, but we all know that that fan base, look at his face. <laughs> what? have you not seen any of that chatter that the Lakers shouldn't be on TV as much as they are? Yeah, I look, but this is the thing. One thing that I think, you know, everybody and obviously Renee, I, like, I, I know you. Uh, I don't know who, I, who this other guy over. I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying it's like, I don't always involve myself with ignorant chatter unless I'm doing ignorant chatter for my own amusement. Uh, <laughs> for like, for instance, when Steph said, like, we did a whole thing on NBA Today, Steph was like, you know, could you hit 14 threes? He's like, you never know. Anything can happen. And I'm like, 
people, y'all are setting this man up for failure. He he's actually came out today and said, I kind of regret saying that, you know, because yeah, he got lost guy. in the sauce. He yeah, said. yeah, yeah, because it's excitement. <laughs> like he and and just to give people an example, this is not a shot at Steph. This is like he said it during one of like his podium interviews, probably about four or five games ago. It's like, what will it mean to him? And he's like, I don't want to talk about it because you guys are going to get me emotional. So this is a huge emotional thing for him. And that's one thing that people were like, oh, you know, 14 games, four, he'll do it in four. I'm like, he's not doing it. To make, he's like, this man would make 10 threes every day if he could. He would. Yeah. <laughs> he's going, and, yeah. and he's played 900 games and he's only done it like 30 times. And I say only, but I like, think about that, just yeah. the percentage. So the chances of that. So when we start getting into these random bits of, of chatter <laughs> of like the Lakers shouldn't be on it. The Lakers were on national TV even when they were shitty, even before <laughs> LeBron James. Like that's just the the Celtics are going to be on TV. The Knicks are going to be on TV. There are certain great franchises that their fan bases dictate who's on national television versus the quality of the performance of their team. And we actually just spoke about this. So where is LA going at the end of the season? That's what the actual question was, but I like that you elaborated on the chatter. But the question is, where, what should you expect from them? Like, you know, we've seen them play great at times. We've seen them not play great. They've had injuries. Where is LA going with their huge fan base? Where are they heading? Ooh, that's tough, man. That's tough. <laughs> I, I think, you know, Again, injuries. Like let, let's start. Out. Carmelo's had a great year so far for who he is and like what he's bringing to the table. LeBron's been injured. Anthony Davis, you know, hasn't played up to the tier that he would like. Uh, uh, Russell, he's on a brand new team with mega mega superstars, uh, and there's a lot going on. So I, I feel like you know when you have Kendrick Nunn still hasn't fucking su suited up for him. Like this is a guy that gives you 10, 14 points a game, somewhere 15 points a game. You know, and then Taylor Hurd and Turkin hurt at the end, beginning of the season. So I personally think that the Lakers are probably a four or five seed right now if they were to, like, get healthy and get rolling. Because I think Phoenix is playing too well. I think um, Utah, like, these are teams that are just, like, they're a, an engine, right? They're just, they're, they're a train going down the track. So I think they're a four or five seed at best. And I, I still think that the Lakers, if they play their best, best basketball and are 100% healthy, they should be, you know, in a top three conversation in the league. Uh, obviously, the, the, that team is driven by a LeBron James' quest to continue to accrue these rings like like Thanos so that hopefully he can, when it's all said and done, uh, you know, stack those up against uh, what Michael Jordan has done. Um, that window is open now, but it is small. Do we underappreciate LeBron, just like how long he's been good? You uh, were a teammate of his. Um, do you think that the the, the, the general sports fan really understand like how amazing it is what he has done is? I think they do. And I think Renee will understand what I'm about to say next is that. And I respect Michael Jordan because he helped grow the league. Magic Johnson helped grow the league. Larry Bird helped grow the league. I think they also paved the way for you to be a superstar and to be outspoken. Let's be real. Anytime LeBron James opens his mouth about a political issue or about something that you, he's pissing off 50% of the population. <laughs> he's, he's pissing off 50% of the population. So I, I think that when you say take it for granted, yes, definitely his talent and his ability has been taken for granted. Uh, and we're so used to him. We're quick to tear him down unless he wins a championship, right? Even though he's just doing record breaking things. But I think partly of part of that is because he's been so outspoken about other things that people will be so quick to, I don't want to say tear him down, but not give him the credit that they deserve, he deserves on the basketball court because they might disagree with him in other areas uh, of his activism. Take Line is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Warriors at Celtics, folks. Steph Curry heads to TD Garden on Friday. Will Marcus Smart go one for 50? Will Jason Tatum throw his angriest, hardest, finger-breaking pass yet? I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know that if you play fantasy sports on NBA, NFL, MLB, underdog fantasy is the best and easiest way to play fantasy sports. One of the best ways to do that is their pick'em game. Just pick over or under on your favorite or least favorite player stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night. Sign up now with the code TAKELINE, and you'll double your first deposit up to $100 in bonus cash when you make your first deposit of $10 or more. Deposit $100, get another $100 free. 
So what are you waiting for? Sign up with code TAKELINE, get your deposit match, and draft your NBA Dream Team today. You know, you brought it up about athletes kind of speaking out. And you were one of those early athletes that you started to get into the player content game very early. You started road tripping podcasts while you were playing. A lot of athletes now are following. Yeah, you better talk. About yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> this is, uh, I mean, now it's content. Athletes and content is is very understood, but it wasn't like that when, when you started. So in this content, content <laughs> athlete age, like, what what is like what are the pros and cons because now you see where athletes now are you know responding to coaches via their platform and responding to different things that are going on in their own teams so what are kind of the pros and cons of this because you started it Richard look what uh, you yeah, started yeah, yeah. okay you know no, 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 no. <laughs> But it's, just, it's it's so funny man it's like people like always associate like Henry Ford with like like the Ford company didn't start cars. They weren't the first car company. But what they did is they started the assembly line and they were able to mass produce cars. I didn't start the podcast, but I definitely saw that the content that could be available for athletes with podcasts that are just like, all you gotta do is walk around with a mic and a recorder. And then, you know, there's different ways. I would say this, that the world is continuing to evolve and we have to evolve with it. When you look at social media, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Snapchat, whether it's MySpace, whatever the fucking Facebook, whatever wow. it is. Throw back. I know, I'm going back. Mm -hmm. I'm going back. Because, because this is the thing. Without MySpace, there probably wouldn't be a Facebook. Without Facebook, there probably wouldn't be Instagram. Without Instagram, there wouldn't have been a Snapchat and, and so on. So like you got to, no different than we give credit to Will Chamberlain. You know, and we give credit to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You got to give credit to the people that kind of started this ball. Point being is this. Now that things are evolving, it is our job as media. It's, it's coaches' jobs. Like, they can't coach players as aggressively as they did. There's no Bob Knight coming into yeah. this world, into the coaching right. world. And Bob Knight is one of the greatest coaches, not just, like, in college basketball, but, like, in American sports history. Bob Knight's one of the greatest. Bob Knight can't exist today. That's just the reality of like putting hands on players, the, the cuss words, the throw in, that's just wouldn't go because that's not the society we live in. So I think media is evolving too. And I think there's, there's pros and cons. I think there's pros in the sense that now like media places, athletes can use their platform to promote whatever positive, whether if it's a new brand, a new cooking show, whatever it is that you want to do. And I think that's one thing that college athletes, college athletes need to start focusing on their brands so quickly, not because of the NIL, but one of the things I was telling somebody is that, listen, if you are a college softball player, if you can gain 25,000 followers while you're in college with people that support the softball team For or sure. support the university, but then you're going to then want to start a makeup line, a clothing line, a, you want to start your own, uh, uh, you want to start a real estate company. All of those followers then come with you. All of that audience then comes with you and they get to watch you grow into a human being, into a person, into a business person. So as much as your sport should be number one, your platform should be number two and your education should be number three. And I only say this, I don't know what I wanted to do at 22. I didn't know my job is to get the education, but if I know for a fact that if I have a hundred thousand followers on any platform, that might serve me better when I'm 42 than my degree in X mm. in, in home economics, my degree in, in social, you know, whatever. Like how many, like a small portion of people, I'm gonna say the amount of people that use their degrees specifically for what they went to school with. I feel like it continues to dwindle. So if you can focus on growing your brand, so if you want to start, you know, a yoga studio, if you want to start whatever it is, you have an, a, an audience that will allow you to do that. Getting an education might teach you how to do these things, but it won't necessarily put you in a position to go and grow and start and start something. You, uh, you've expanded to TikTok now. Uh, you're at you know, over 300,000 uh, followers on, on TikTok. What is your, what are your strategy for approaching that as a, as a way to extend your brand, extend content? Like how do you, uh, you've really kind of like settled into a groove with the type of content yeah. that you're releasing, but how did you hit on your style on that platform? So first and foremost, uh, you know, I was slow to social media. I didn't get Instagram till I was like retired. And it was mainly because my dumb ass, didn't want to start a media, didn't want to start like building up social media while I played. 
So now I'm behind, I'm, you know, behind the eight ball. So I've been doing this. I think TikTok, I had, I had a, a, a company called Content Capital and they helped me. They helped me because I have nine other jobs and they're just like, hey, are you interested? Yes, I'm interested. Here, these are some things that you can do. But again, you organically find the things and people would uh, send me messages on it. And so I just started talking to them. Now, anybody that knows my per that my personality is, I'm a bit sarcastic. I like having fun. I like talking shit. I like making fun of myself as like as, as much as I like making fun of other people. So that's what I just started doing. I just started having fun and interacting. And it's just like anything. The sooner you interact with the community in an authentic way, it's like Facebook has a community, uh, Instagram has a community, Twitter has a community. And the sooner that you can understand the community that you're talking to, like the more successful that you can be. And that goes for anything. It doesn't matter if it's a platform. It doesn't matter if it's making cupcakes. It doesn't matter if you want to start a food show. And one thing that uh, Ali Clifton, who co-hosts Road Tripping Podcast with me, um, one of the things that we talked about from the beginning, create the opportunities that you want. For instance, Richard, you want to get into the media. Okay, well, I'm doing a job. Well, you can do road tripping podcasts. You can start a podcast, start interviewing players, start working on that. But I didn't know it was going to blow up. I didn't know it was going to turn into this crazy, crazy thing. But it was like I was working on my reps. Oh, Richard, you want to, you want to, um, you want to interview pop culture people. Well, Renee, I started doing um, uh, uh, Instagram lives on the Sports Center on the Sports Center app, and then all of a sudden it's like I'm interviewing little Dicky, I'm interviewing T.I., I'm interviewing Sweetie, I'm interviewing all of these people um, that are unrelated to sports because I'm trying to create the opportunities that I want. And I think with TikTok, you know, you're, I need a younger audience. There's a younger audience on there. So like, if you want to continue growing into a media personality or into a media space, you have to create the opportunities that you want. And then maybe somebody will come and notice and be like, hey, have you ever interviewed anybody? So I started doing stuff for extra. And extra is like, have you ever interviewed anybody outside of basketball? It's like, well, actually I have. I did this, this, and this, and this. And I can show them, even within the sports center world and in ESPN, when the pandemic hit, I was interviewing celebrities, you know, Mike Epps and all these different people. I was interviewing them because I wanted to create the opportunity that I wanted for myself. And so that's my number one advice is that if you want an opportunity, create it, build it, and then allow people to take notice versus walking into a room and saying, this is what I want to do. I love that because yeah. when you're creating things that you want, so you have, you're in a very unique space. So I know you've done the Oculus broadcast and mm -hmm. I just did my first one recently, probably because you were unavailable. So I thank you for being <laughs> I, busy listen, and having I, I'm nine gonna be, jobs. I, I'm going to be unavailable a couple more times. So I got you, girl. Let's go. So are you <laughs> going to do more types of experimental content like that with the Oculus and even your new YouTube channel, the Sports Gap? Like, is that the kind of opportunities that you like, those different ones? It, 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 you know what it is, is I don't know what I like. And just like the way I try and tell, tell like where I am at now, I'm back to being a 12 year old kid in PE, right? We playing soccer today. We playing <laughs> basketball today. We playing flag football today. What are we doing? Cause I just want, <laughs> I want to play. I want to play. Yeah. And it didn't matter what sport it is. We playing, we playing tetherball. We playing four square, whatever <laughs> the fuck, just let's go play. And so eventually basketball got its hooks into me. And I was like, this is it. This is what I can do for 12 hours a day. I don't care. This is what I can watch 10 hours a day. And so for me, I don't know what I want to do long term. So right now it's like, okay, I'm doing podcasts. Okay, I've had this idea for like a sports variety show. Let's do the sports gap. Now this shit comes, it comes out of my own pocket too. And I say I've this- been not, there. I know I, all I, about I, that. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that like I don't have the money, but like people, if you're not going to invest in yourself, no one else will. And I'm coming from a, a position of like, people know my name, I work for ESPN, but it's like, if this is the project I want, the sports gap, then I got to go do it. Then I got to go do it and show people that I can do it, show people my idea. Because the minute they're like, well, if we're paying for it, this is what we're thinking. This is what we think you should do. This is what we feel like this topic is, or we didn't really like what you said there, or we can't talk about this. And it's like, okay, I'll go do this on my own. And, not, but, and that's the beautiful thing about the internet. You don't need anyone else. You wake up, you start, you go. You want to start a cooking channel? Well, motherfucker, you got a kitchen? 
You got to go buy <laughs> that food. You got to go buy that food. You got to go do all this stuff. You got to put the two hours in the kitchen. You got to do the, the video. You got to do the audio. If that's what you want, then you have to create those opportunities. So I don't know what I want to do. All I know is that I enjoy the media space. I enjoy conversations with people. And so I'm trying to do a million different things. Maybe I'll be on The View one day. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Okay. We'll be all know. at your boy, yeah. okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, let's go. That's I'm putting it out there. I want Whitney. All right, not Whitney. Whoopi, put me on. Put me on the view. <laughs> he the is view, NBA Whoopi. champion Richard Jefferson. Check him out on a variety of different platforms, including ESPN, including his own TikTok, including the Sports Cap Road Trip and Podcast. Anywhere, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us. Wait, we're done. We're done already. I was just getting warmed up. I was you ain't gotta up. go home, Richard. 